Welcome to the Ask a Scientist video series. In this episode, we'll talk about how the sequencing of RNA is performed. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, and its main function is to carry genetic information encoded in DNA for the synthesis of proteins to carry out cellular functions. RNA is present in all living cells, including plants, animals, and microbes. RNA sequencing is the process of sequencing the RNA from a biological sample. The results can be qualitative, telling us what mRNAs are present and which genes are expressed, or qualitative, which provides information about relative gene expression. More transcripts from a gene mean higher expression, and fewer means lower gene expression. The central dogma of molecular biology, first described in 1957, suggests that the primary role of RNA is to carry genetic information encoded in the double-stranded DNA to be translated into proteins, which then carry out biological processes and ultimately all cellular functions. The first step is transcription of RNA from the genes encoded in the DNA, illustrated by the bars in the image. Transcription is carried out by RNA polymerases. The information in the RNA is then translated into proteins via ribosomes and amino acids. Thus, by assaying the RNA present in a biological sample, we can gain insights into what is going on at a molecular level. RNA can be isolated readily from biological samples. However, to prepare RNA for sequencing, it first must be converted into double-stranded DNA molecules that can serve as a template for DNA polymerases during NGS library preparation. These DNA copies are called complementary DNA, or cDNA. The generation of cDNA is initiated by using reverse transcriptase enzyme, which is an RNA-dependent DNA polymerase, and priming to form the first strand of cDNA. The second strand is then synthesized through the use of DNA polymerase to generate the double-stranded cDNA. Making an RNA sequencing library involves multiple steps. First, prior to the cDNA synthesis I just described, the isolated RNA is typically fragmented to produce fragment sizes that are compatible with short read sequencers. The fragmented RNA is then converted to cDNA. This makes the cDNA fragments compatible with the next step, adapter ligation. An additional step called 3'A tailing is also performed. In this step, adapters are ligated to the cDNA fragments and the resulting library molecules are amplified. NGS adapters perform several functions, including preparing the cDNAs for the steps performed on the sequencing flow cell and barcoding each sample so that the sequencing reads from multiplexed experiments can be assigned to the correct sample when analyzing the data. The final libraries are now ready for QC, followed by multiplexing and sequencing. There are several different methods for RNA-seq library preparation, and each provides answers to a subset of research questions. Thus, when planning RNA sequencing experiments, it's important to know which kinds of information you need. Additionally, it is important to know what types of analysis tool you plan to use to analyze the RNA sequencing data. Some examples of qualitative information that can be gained from RNA-seq are the annotation of transcripts expressed in a particular cell type, or the identification of novel transcripts. Some examples of quantitative data include the measurement of differential gene expression between different samples, such as treated or non-treated samples, healthy and diseased tissues, and different developmental stages, or the identification of alternately spliced transcripts, perhaps in response to an external stimulus. Thanks for watching Ask a Scientist. If you have questions or ideas for future topics, we would love to hear from you.